Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to write a program that will blink an LED. Now let's get started by going to my, my website, pyjava.com. I'm going to select Pi Programming and I'm going to select the blinking LED tutorial. Now in this tutorial we'll demonstrate how to create, compile, and run a program that will blink an LED. I will build on concepts learned from my Hello Pi tutorial and my installed Java ME tutorial. I highly recommend you complete those tutorials prior to starting this one. Basically, you're going to be really confused if you haven't completed both of them, especially the Install Java ME tutorial. If your folders are different than mine, and some of the paths might be, uh, well, you can either adjust for them, you know, or, or make sure you got it set up just like I do. Um, I've created an illustration of the pinout scheme for the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Now, I arbitrarily picked the GPO, uh, GPIO pin 18 to use for a blinking LED. Pay special attention to the J8 on the illustration there. So you see the J8 down here? Um, I'll show you why. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my window with my Raspberry Pi here. Let's stretch this out. Now right in here, you see this little J8? And I'll actually point to it on the board there too as well. But that little, that little J8 right there corresponds with the... J8 over here, okay? So you want to make sure that, uh, so for example, these two pins right here are our two 5 volt pins right there, okay? So that's, that is the pinout diagram that I've done there. Um, one, one thing to note while I got this up here is the, an LED, right? You'll notice it has a longer leg and a shorter leg, right? The longer leg is actually the positive end of the LED, and the shorter leg is the ground. Okay, that'll come into effect here later on. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize that. And um, so let's go ahead and just get started with some source code here. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to connect up to my Raspberry Pi here. desktop in. Oh, login failed. Must have typed it wrong. Okay, I'm actually going to move this off screen over here. Okay, um, the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and open up a terminal here. And I'm going to type in the command make dir java. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you there. And actually, I deleted it prior to this uh, tutorial, so I don't actually have it. So let's change directories to the java folder. And I'm going to make another dir here, and I'm just going to call this one uh, blinking LED. Okay, let's change directories to the blinking LED folder. And I am going to uh, leaf pad blinking LED.java. Be the name of our source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Okay, now instead of typing in a whole bunch of stuff, let's go ahead and just open up my Pi Java here inside of, inside of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and um, select this Pi programming, blinking LED. This way we can cut and paste, and you don't have to watch me. Uh, wow, that's that sure turned out funky in that browser. Huh. All right. Well, anyway, we'll scroll down. We don't need to. We can always pull back over the other browser there. Chromium didn't like that little div tag I got in there. All right, so um, let's go ahead and highlight all this source code here. And I'm not gonna go over a whole lot of stuff in the source code here. I'll, I'll go over some of it briefly, but in future tutorials, I'll go ahead and actually go over a lot more detail on what everything is there. Um, the, the key difference between the hello um, and the declaration, the class declaration up here is we're, we're implementing uh, the pin listener. Um, so pin listener has one required um, method down here, value changed, and we're not going to use that in this particular uh, program here. But um, 
what we are going to, uh, well actually maybe I'll go over it a little bit here before we before we go on with this here. So we've got, of course, our start app, which is our entry point here. And I'll just display, you know, that to the console there. Um, we're gonna have this, um, this reference variable here, this config there of type uh, GPIO pin config. And then we've set some stuff here, zero for the, the controller number. And 18 is where we'll set the pin number. And this is just a GPIO pin config builder here. So we'll build the thing there. And then we have to make a call to the device manager and invoke its open method, pass in two parameters, the name of the class and, of course, this GPIO pin config reference variable there. Um, and then we're going to loop through 200 times. And when we invoke the set value method there, that will turn that pin high. And, or in other words, it'll apply some positive voltage to it there. Right, and then we'll display that to the console that it's on, plus of course the the for loop number that it's on, um, and then we'll tell it to go to sleep for about a hundred milliseconds, a tenth of a second, and then we'll set the vol the value to false, which will turn turn it off, set it low, and then we'll tell the uh, program to sleep for nine hundred milliseconds. So it'll blink roughly once every second there. So. Um, and I'm not going to put in a, a resistor on my LED, so. Uh, only having it on for a, a tenth of a second isn't going to burn up my LED or anything like that, so it'll be it'll be just fine. If you really want to do it proper, you can throw a resistor in there to protect your LED, but it's really not going to be any big deal. Um, we're going to do some catches, and then um, as soon as it, it's done with its for loop here, of course, our try catch will execute the finally here, in which case I'm going to go ahead and invoke the pin.close method so we can close that... Uh, that pin number, GPIO pin 18. Uh, destroy app, some stuff in there too anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and save this here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this here. And, um, you know, it's blocking down here, but that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and just close out of that. All right, so let's go ahead and compile this. So Java C, and of course we have to do our class, class path. Right, dot colon home pi Java me, which is where we did the installation, right? And I can't remember if it's in bin or live where that class is, is there. Let's see if it's in the live classes.zip. And of course, the name of the file we want to compile, which is our blinking LED.java. Okay, I'll enter on that. Okay, if we do an ls right here, see we've got our blinking LED.class, which is our bytecode file and our original source code file. All right, um, now what we need to do is we need to create our manifest. Okay, so we're going to do leafpad manifest.mf. And we'll come back over here to the website. We'll scroll down here. And we'll cut and paste this stuff here, okay? Okay, so one of the things that I talked about in the previous tutorial is that it's super important that we have an extra, extra line feed here, right? If this is the end of the file, we're gonna get an error. So we wanna just make sure we've got at least one, two of them doesn't hurt anyway, so. Um, We've got uh, the name of the, the midlet or imlet. Imlet and midlet you can use synonymously. They're essentially, you know, when I if, you, if I say one or the other, they essentially mean the same thing. And then we got the class name, the configuration. And what you'll see is there's two special permissions here. The device management, management permission. Um, basically setting this with, with star colon star basically allows us to open up every single GPIO pin there. It gives us permission to do so, right? Same thing with the pin permission there too. We need both of these in there as, uh, you know, you can't just have one. So they work kind of together there on the, on the permission stuff there. Um, we can't just write code and arbitrarily open up hardware pins in, uh, in the Raspberry Pi there. So. Uh, that's that's two things there, and I'll go over a lot more of this in future tutorials here. So let's go ahead and just save that. Uh, right, and we are ready to go ahead and build our our Java archive there. So let's type in jar. 
uh, CVFM blinking LED dot jar is going to be the name of our jar file, right? And then our manifest.mf, and finally our blinking LED dot class. Okay, so we're going to build that archive with all that stuff in there. Okay, now I want to do an ls minus l. And so you can see the file size here is 2001 bytes. So now the last thing we need to do is just create our uh, JAD file, the Java application descriptor file. So we'll do uh, leafpad uh, blinking LED dot JAD. Okay. And it's very similar, of course, to the manifest file. And we'll just come down here and paste, cut and paste this stuff here. <coughs> And our file size here was 2001, okay? So let's go ahead and save that. And we can just minimize that. Close out of that. And we are uh, we're kind of good to go. We've got everything built. If we do an LS on this, you can see, got our byte code, we got our jar file, our manifest, our JAD, our Java, Java applic application descriptor, and of course our source code file there. All right, let's go ahead and open up another terminal here, and we're going to go over to the, the Java ME folder, and then we're going to go to the, uh, the bin and do an ls, okay? So um, I talked briefly about some of these scripts that, were, uh, that are listed in this folder here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to type in dot slash list midlets, okay? Now, I already have the, uh, the blinking LED suite 2 midlet installed from when I was actually testing my tutorial here. So, and um, if you've got, uh, if you followed my Hello Pi one, you'll probably see the Hello Pi one in there too. See, this one has a suite number of two. So what we want to do is we want to uh, remove all the midlets here. So I'm going to just put in that. We pass the um, argument of two over there. And you'll see all of these errors, and that's that's just fine. What we're really looking for was sweet removed. Okay, now if we do a dot slash list midlets again, <clears throat> we have no sweets installed. So now we're ready to install it there. So we simply do dot slash install midlets, and then we want to do home pi. We're going to give it the location of that jar file that we made there. Blinking LED and blinking LED dot jar okay we'll of course get some errors and stuff like that but we we're looking for this one line here the suite was successfully installed in our id number two all right now if we do dot slash list midlets you'll see that it's in fact installed there all right so we're going to go ahead and run it here um now anytime you anytime you run a uh, a midlet or an imlet same difference, um, that you've had to ask for special permissions, specifically the GPIO ports, you're gonna wanna run that with sudo, super user do. And so, let's just go ahead and do uh, run, and then the number, right? Suite number two, so that's all we have to do is to run that. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And so what we got is we've got it going on one, on two, on three, four, right? And, um, if we pop back over here and we do leaf pad blinking LED dot Java, right? We're in this in this for loop here, right? And it's hitting this once a second. Okay, so we got 200 seconds to to hook our little LED up because our ports are opening and everything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put this into its own little window here and pull back over the this thing here, okay, and let's go ahead and hook up hook up our little wire here. So I got this this little wire right there, right, and it has a black and white there, okay. So on the on the pinouts here, move that back over.
Um, you see the third pin over is ground. Okay. And I wanted to just get this and up like that. There we go. That's probably good enough there. Okay. So one, two, three pin over is the ground. So we're going to put the black, the black wire right on the third pin over. All right. One, two, three. Okay. And then on the pin 18 is one, two, three more pins over. Okay. All right. So now, oh, now you see I've got the two pins, third pin, two more pins, third pin. So we've got the, the stuff hooked up there, right? Okay. Uh, so the shorter LED is in fact the should be hooked into the ground okay and the longer LED hooked into the positive okay so you can see we've got our LED blinking now go ahead and move that down there a little bit all right, and let's go ahead and minimize that. Let's come back over here to this window here. We can kind of see them running kind of at the same time there. So you can see we're on 175, 176, 77, so on and so forth here. So we've got about uh, 20 more blinks before this program stops and our LED stops flashing there. Okay, and uh, about 10 more now. Then we'll get our little message that is closing the pin down and everything, which is executed, of course, in the finally statement there. Okay, closing GPL pin. We no longer have our LED blinking, and we are all set. Okay, um, just want to leave you guys with some some final thoughts there. Let's see. Actually, I'm gonna clean up my desktop here a little bit. I might go ahead and. Uh, Come in here. Actually, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control C on this, right? To break out of that. Uh, you can use the up arrow and the down arrows and stuff on your keyboard if you wanted to start running it again. So, um, if we want to go and just rerun that and re execute that, we can go ahead and just do. Uh, where's our sudo? Do, do, do. There's sudo enter, right? And then we started that back up again there. So, that's just a little, little shortcut key there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close, or actually minimize the remote desktop, and move this back over here and leave you guys with some final thoughts there. So um, hopefully I've piqued your interest in developing programs for controlling hardware on the Raspberry Pi. In my future tutorials, I will go into detail on the key concepts that drive the Java ME programs. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.